Hey guys, welcome back to One Stop Biology. So uh, till now we have completed almost half of the chapter three, wherein we have covered uh, algae and bryophytes. So we are basically dealing with NCERT class eleventh chapter three, and what we are left with are pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. So in this video we are going to cover. Pteridophytes and gymnosperms both. Okay, so let's start with pteridophytes first. Basically, they include horsetails and ferns. Okay, so they include horsetails and ferns, and they are widely used for medicinal purposes, and they are used as soil binders as well. Some of the pteridophytes are also grown as ornamental plants. Okay, so these are basically the first. terrestrial plants to possess vascular system which are xylem and phloem so you will have to remember this they are the first plants to possess vascular tissues okay now these are found in cool damp shady places and some may also flourish well in sandy soil conditions okay now if we talk about the plant body plant body is a sporophyte which is differentiated into true root stem and leaves so i hope you would have seen the last video on bryophytes and where there what we study that they do not have they lack true root uh, stem and leaves system right so here uh, they basically consist of two true root stem and leaves now the organs possess well differentiated vascular tissues as well xylem and phloem okay so leaves how are the leaves leaves are small as well as large so they consists of small they can consist of either small which are microphylls as in case of selaginella or large leaves as well which are macrophylls in case of ferns now sporophytes uh, of in the plant body basically bear sporangia and what is this sporangia so basically see these produces spores okay so spores sporophytes contain sporangia and this is subtended by leaf like appendages which are known as sporophylls these appendages are known as sporophylls which can sometimes form distinct compact structure which are known as cones strobili or cones and these sporangia produces spores by meiosis in the spore mother cells and these spores basically germinate to give rise to small but multicellular free living gametophytes okay so again here the structure is sporophyte and gametophyte the, the basically cycle is sporophyte as well as gametophyte and these sporangia produces spores which germinate to give rise to the gametophyte which is known as prothallus which is known as prothallus okay so spores germinate to give rise to inconspicuous small but multicellular free living photosynthetic thalloid okay so the gametophytic phase phase is again or of a thallus now these gametophytes require cool damp and shady places to grow and hence are restricted okay so these require cool damp and shady places to grow now these gametophytes bear male and female sex organs as well and what are the female and female sex organs as in what we saw in uh, bryophytes right so it is anthridia and archegonia okay so anthridia is basically nothing but the male sex organ and archegonia is the female sex organ okay now again like bryophytes they require water for transfer of anthrozoites which is the male gamete so this these anthridia produce what they produce anthrozoites okay the male gamete which are released from anthridia to the mouth of the archegonium and it is it basically goes to archegonium where you have egg cell and then they form the zygote now remember that this is the sexual reproduction now fusion of male gamete with egg egg cell result in formation of 
zygote which again produces a multicellular well differentiated sporophytic phase and this sporophytic phase is the dominant phase okay so again there is a cycle or in between gametophytic gametophytic and sporophytic phase now majority of pteridophytes all spores spores of similar kind in such plants they are homospores okay so basically majority of pteridophytes have similar kind of spores and then that is why they are known as homospores okay and generally like selaginella and salvinia they produce two kind of spores so there are some genera like selaginella which produce two kind of spores wherein one spore is large and the other spore is small one is macro another one is micro and these kind of genera are known as heterospores now megaspores and microspores germinate and give rise to female and male gamete respectively so where they have two different kind of spores the megaspore the larger one give rise to female and the microspore the smaller one give rise to male gametophyte okay and again development of zygote into young embryo take takes place within the female gametophyte the megaspores okay now this is the precursor to seed habit and it is that is why it is considered very important in evolution so this is the first time when you find seed in a plant and that is why it is a important precursor to evolution now pteridophytes are basically classified into four classes which are psilopsida lycopsida sphenopsida and and pteropsida okay and examples as well are given for you so as per ncert you just need to remember this okay now you they have not dealt it uh, in detail after we finish ncert we will we are going to deep diver into details as well like as per the other books right so here they have just mentioned that the phytes are further classified into four classes and what are these four classes these four classes are basically psilopsida lycopsida sphenopsida and pteropsida and there are some examples given as well so we'll see a structure or two as well so basically these are the structure uh, wherein the first one is selaginella and the second one is equistatum okay so here in selaginella as you can see these are the roots okay here you have leaves and this is the stem so this this part is the stem in the same way in the case of equistatum this is a strobilus here you have the node you have the internode and then there are branches and rhizome okay so these are two different structures of pteridophytes with this we finish uh, pteridophytes i hope you uh, you understood it it's not much different uh, with uh, you know bryophytes it's quite similar to that it just is more advanced or more complex in term of its uh, different uh, or different systems like it has a well developed vascular system it has a well developed or true root shoot and uh, leaf system okay so it is basically more advanced form of bryophytes and then it has the first very first time it has seed as well okay so next we will move to gymnosperms now what exactly are gymnosperms actually gymnosperms are again true form of plants okay so gymnosperms basically have naked seeds and that is how they got their name gymnos means naked and sperma means seed So they are basically plants in which 
ovules are not enclosed by any ovary wall and remain exposed both before and after fertilization so the seed the ovules are not enclosed by any ovary wall and it remains exposed now they include medium sized trees tall trees and shrubs there is a the giant redwood tree which is one of the tallest tree species of gymnosperms which is known as sequoia okay now the roots how are the roots the roots are generally tap roots and sometimes have fungal association in the form of mycorrhiza okay so we read this word in the very first chapter and mycorrhiza is nothing but a symbiotic association with a gymnosperm so with the plant with a tree pinus pine tree it has a symbiotic association okay and what does it do it does nitrogen fixation for the tree so the tree gives the fungus nutrition and it fixes nitrogen for the tree and this how are the stems now so the stems basically can be unbranched and it can be branched okay so in the case of cycas it is unbranched in the case of pinus or cedrus it is branched in the same way leaves can be simple or compound so cycas has pinnate leaves which persists for a few years it, it, so cycas does not shed the leaves so easily okay or so soon now leaves are well adapted to withstand extremes of temperature humidity and wind okay so they these trees basically can survive into extreme of temperatures now these conifers the cones have needle like leaves which reduces the surface area it has thick cuticle and sunken stomata which reduces water loss as well they have well adapted leaves to withstand extreme of temperature humidity and wind like they have needle like leaf in some trees in some plants they have thick cuticle and sunken stomata now gymnosperms are basically heterosporous so they form two different types of spores haploid spores which are megaspores which is the female one and microspores which is which is the male one now these are produced within sporangia okay sporangia basically are born on sporophylls which are arranged spirally along an axis and it forms a lax or compact strobili or cone so basically these sporangia are formed on cones or strobili now this strobili are basically either microsporophylls bear or microsporangia and then it is known as microsporangiate or male stro strobili so basically this strobili can have male or female sex organ in case it has the male sex organ that is microsporophyll or microsporangia it is known as microsporangiate or male strobili okay and in the other case it can be a female sporangia which is megasporophylls wherein it will be known as macrosporangiate or female strobili now the microspores the male organs develop into male gametophyte generation which is highly reduced and is confined to only limited number of cells so remember that in the case as we are moving forward we are we are just visualizing that gametophytic stage is getting reduced right so here the male gametophytic generation is highly reduced and is confined to only limited number of cells which is pollen grains right now development of pollen grain basically gives rise to microsporangia okay and in the case of female strobilus it is known as macrosporangiate or female strobili now male or female cones may be born on the same tree which is the case in pinus or different trees or on different trees which is in the case of cycas and the megaspore mother cell is differentiated from one of cells of nucleus which is protected by envelope and composite structure which is known as ovule so they have ovule which is basically nothing but clustered to form female cone right so the megaspore mother cell divides meiotically to form four megaspores 
right? So they form four megaspores. Okay. Now one is enclosed within megasporangium, one of which is enclosed within megasporangium, which is known as mucellus, right? And it develops into multicellular female gametophyte, right? So basically multicellular female gametophyte okay and two or more archegonia female sex organs basically they form the female sex organs now male and female gametophytes do not have independent free living existence so the male and female gametophyte that we are studying here basically do not have independent existence they remain within the sporangia always right and how they are carried they are carried in air currents and it comes into contact with the opening of ovule now the poly pollen tube develops from them which carries the female gram gamete towards archegonia in the ovule and then discharge their contact content near the mouth of archegonia and following this fertilization occurs and the zygote develops into an embryo okay so the zygote develops into an embryo and ovules into seed which are not covered right they are known as bryophyte uh, gymnosperms because the seed are not covered okay so with this we end gymnosperms as well i have a task for you basically i want you to go online or open your book and search for some examples of gymnosperms like i would state cycus is one then we have pinus right and so we have so many so just go and check how different the structure of a gymnosperm is how different the trees are and you will come if you will compare you will see drastic difference between gymnosperms and teridophytes okay so i have a task for you just go and check the different types of gymnosperms and their diagrams their structures okay so guys with this we finish teridophytes and gymnosperms both i hope you understood the video very well again these topics are important with as with aspect of botany okay if not please do uh, mention the comment of the video comment section and i will reply to that you can also uh, send me a whatsapp message on the number given in the description uh, of this video and i'll reply to you over there as well if you want more such content to study please log in to my website www dot one stop biology dot com and you can get a lot of help from there as well uh, i would request you to uh, like if it like it if you understood the video please do share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates thanks guys bye bye